Hello, welcome to the next video in mathematics and today we will be looking into the third lecture on elements of algebra and my business is mathematics and I will ensure you understand mathematics properly. I will make sure that you see through mathematics. That is my aim. So, what are we going to look today? We are going to study about the concept of GCD, Greatest Common Divisor. Not in the traditional way that is being taught to you in your high school. We will be looking into Euclidean algorithm. And then, we will study about least absolute reminder and least positive reminder what are this we'll look into bezo lemma and then we'll try to see how bezo lemma can be used to solve linear Daventian equation and then we'll end the discussion with the number of steps that you require in order for you to solve Euclidean algorithm to calculate the GCD and if you are using the least absolute reminder algorithm whether the steps are going to be same or different so we'll be looking into that so that's what we'll be studying today so let's start off with division algorithm first so what exactly is division algorithm so a divided by b what exactly it means that implies that a is equal to b cube plus r this is normal division we'll try to see why this makes sense in order for us to make sense of it First of all, what I need to do is to prove its existence. So in order for me to prove its existence, what I am going to use? Well, we see that now. So from here I can also say, well, this also implies R is equal to A minus B Q, correct? So, with this, I will try to establish the fact of division algorithm and then I will try to prove that this in fact is only the, is the only way to represent it. That means it's a unique representation and then we will also prove that R is less than B. So, let's start off with a equal to bq plus r that implies r equal to a minus bq so for me to prove its existence how am i going to prove it so let us assume that i have got a set s and this set has got all the elements which are of this particular form a minus bq form And now Q is a variable. Now because Q is a variable, I can put anything in place of Q. If I in place of Q I write A minus B into minus of mod A. So I'm writing minus of mod a in place of q so this implies the whole thing becomes a plus b into mod a and i know a plus b into mod a definitely is greater than a plus mod of a and i know a plus mod of a definitely is greater than a minus mod of a and what is a minus mod of a it's zero so that implies that a plus 
b into mod of a definitely is a positive number so here i have used mod of a in place of q so this implies that a minus b q definitely is a positive number so this particular set is a set of positive number with well, because i got a set of positive numbers so there must be the least element involved in this set and I assume that the least element involved is a minus b into m. So this is the least element in this particular set. Now, what else can we say? Next, we'll try to prove that r is in fact less than b. Now to prove R is less than B, we'll be using proof by contradiction. So we'll be using proof by contradiction. And I assume that R is greater than B. So R greater than B or R greater than equal to B. So this implies that R minus B is greater than equal to zero. Now what is the value of R? If you recall, R was, because I assume that a by b implies a equal to b cube plus r and this implies r is equal to a minus b cube and i assume that if the value of q to be m that is the smallest number so r is equal to a minus b m now this value of r i'm going to replace here so if i'm replacing here this value of r it becomes a minus b m minus b which is greater than equal to zero or this implies a minus and I've got a b here I can take the b common and this becomes m plus 1 which is greater than equal to 0 so what is a minus b m plus 1 so this is the element which is smaller than this element I, and I assume that this is the smallest element this is what I assume that this particular value of R is the smallest element but I am getting a value which in fact is smaller than the smallest element that means my assumption that this particular number is greater than 0 R, sorry, R greater than B is wrong so my assumption is wrong that means R definitely is less than B and next we will try to prove that this particular representation is unique what i mean by unique is as we have seen that a divided by b implies a equal to b q plus r so this is unique i and so there is no two-way representation of it what i mean by two-way representation is let us assume that this is possible to represent this particular a in two different ways so let's say in particular one way is a equal to b q1 plus r1 and again a equal to b q2 plus r2 so i'm writing a in two different ways so i'm what i mean to by unique way is it is not possible to write a in more than one way there is only one unique representation so if it ever it is possible so again i am using contradiction to prove so i am assuming that this is true that a particular number a can be written in terms of uh, uh, this division uh, formula in two different ways so if ever it is possible so we are again trying to prove by contradiction so by contradiction i am trying to prove that this and this are same so i assume that this and these are same so this implies bq1 plus r1 should be equal to bq2 plus r2 and this implies i can take the b factor in this side so this we end up getting bq1 minus bq2 which is equal to r2 minus r1 so i can take the b common that is q1 minus q2 is equal to r2 minus r1 now we know since r we know is greater than or equal to zero and less than b so in place of r i can say well r2 so this also implies 0 is greater than r2 b and this also implies that r1 and b so if i'm writing this 
So because I need to write in terms of minus R1, so I've got a minus R1 here, so maybe I can convert this into minus R1. And if I write in terms of minus R1, so this becomes your 0 greater than equal to minus R1 greater than B. So I've got this and I've got this. Now, because I need to write in this particular form, so I can say, well, that also implies that R2 minus R1 is greater than or equal to minus b and less than or equal to b or this implies now i can write the whole thing in terms of uh, mod so i can say well that also implies mod of r2 minus r1 is greater than b so r2 minus r1 is b q1 minus q2 so this also implies that b q1 minus q2 is greater than b so this implies q1 minus q2 is less than zero sorry less than one so this also implies q1 minus q2 is less than one so if this is the case that q1 minus q2 because now i'm referring to uh, things in terms of mod so that also implies that mod of q1 minus q2 is greater than zero and less than one and we know that q1 minus q2 is an integer so because q1 and q2 is an integer and i've got an integer between 0 and 1 so greater than equal to 0 and 1 so that implies that q1 minus q2 must be 0 so this implies that q1 minus q2 must be equal to 0 or this implies q1 should be equal to q2 so q1 and q2 are same so with q1 and q2 equal to 0 so if i am substituting this value here so this implies b into 0 is equal to r2 minus r1 and this implies r2 minus r1 is equal to 0 or this implies r1 is equal to r2 so therefore r1 and r2 are same and q1 and q2 are same therefore my assumption that q1 and q2 are different and r1 and r2 are different are wrong therefore this particular interpretation that a number can be written in more than one way is wrong so any number can be written in terms of uh, the division algorithm in only one specific way so there is a unique representation of any number in the division algorithm so this is uh, the first part now whenever we think about uh, algorithm whenever we think about the gcd what exactly that means so because we know any number can be written in terms of prime factors so let's say i've got a number and one and it can be written in terms of prime factor p1 into p2 into p3 square could be and i've got another number and two written in terms of uh, like again prime factors so it is p1 dash p2 dash and p3 so what is the greatest common divisor between this and this quite natural it is the p3 so what about if i got instead of p3 a p3 dash so i got no common factor so between p1 and p1 dash i got no common factor so i got no common factor between p2 and p2 dash and p3 and p3 dash that means gcd in this case will be one so basically whenever we talk about gcd it is basically the common prime factors that we are having and if you do not have any common prime factors in that case we would say that gcd is equal to one or else whatever the common prime factor so that will be the gcd so basically if i'm representing this particular number in terms of prime factors and then if i got more than one prime factors so i need to write the prime factors in terms of exponents and whatever the minimum value of the exponents so you can see here with the in case of p3 i got a 2 here and p3 i got 1 here so whatever the minimum value of the exponent so that will be the gcd so this is arithmetic representation of gcd i can also have a set like representation because a number as i mentioned a number 
N1 written in terms of P1 and P2 and P3. So these are the n factors and the number N2 written in terms of P1 dash and P2 dash and a P3. So if I write each of these prime factors, I've got this as N2 and this number as N1 and then I'm writing out the prime factors for N1. So this is P1, I've got a P2 and I've got a P3 and because of P, uh, so this is your N1 and this is N2 and in case of N2 I have got P1 dash and then P2 dash so what is the common one this is P3 so I can also say that the I can represent the GCD in terms of intersection of two sets where this particular element of the set will be the prime factors and whatever the intersection of that set would be that would be its uh, GCD so this is the representation in terms of a set there is another way of looking into GCD and that is visually so visually how can we uh, think about GCD let's say we have got uh, the number 12 or maybe a 18 and a 8 so if I am required to find the GCD of 18 and 8 so I am required to find the GCD of 18 and 8 so how can I find that so this is my M I am required to find the GCD of this number so how am I going to find the GCD of 18 and 8 visually so visually you can think of this as I have got a uh, line which is 18 so so 8 assume so this number is 8 and then I've got another one which is 1 8 and then the another 8 and then a 2 that means this side is 18 and this side side is 8 and then I can think of this in terms of a rectangle and this 18 we know is 18 to 2 so I've got this one so I'm filling up this space so I'm left with an 8 here and a 2 here so now I can break down this 8 into 4 2 so 1 2 3 and 4 so each of this is 2 so this 2 is the GCD so what exactly is GCD it is the smallest square that can be used to fill up this entire space so this is exactly how visually the GCD would look like so whatever I did now what exactly that means it means that if I have got a number as again we'll be taking the previous example we need to find the GCD between 18 and 8 it implies that 18 is equal to 8 into 2 plus 2 and I need to take the 8 here so this is equal to 2 into 4 plus 0 so I'm left with no reminder here so reminder is 0 that means 2 is the GCD so what exactly we did so this as we know is division algorithm so basically this is exactly what we call as the Euclidean algorithm and this Euclidean algorithm is used to find the GCD and this Euclidean algorithm is basically the normal division rule so if we take any other number let's say the number is uh, 3 and 14 I'm required to find the GCD uh, of 3 and 14 so I can say well 14 is equal to 3 into 4 plus 2 and then the 3 I'm going to take here so this is equal to 2 into 1 plus 1 so I'm left with 1 so 1 is the GCD because after that if I take 2 so this becomes 1 into 2 plus 0 so I'm left with 0 reminder here so the thing that we get before we come into the 0 reminder condition so this is the GCD and this is what we call as the Euclidean algorithm now how can we relate this with the diagram 
So in order for us to relate this with the diagram, I will try to write this in a general form. So how to write the whole thing in a general form? Let's say I got uh, this number A and B and I need to find the GCD of this number A and B. And I'm assuming that A is greater than B. So A greater than B implies that A is equal to B Q1 plus R1. This, now I need to take the B here. So B is equal to R1 Q2 plus R2. I need to take the R1 here. So R1 is equal to R2 Q3 plus R3. And this way, I can go on and on and finally I will come at certain Rn which will be the GCD. So basically GCD is about finding the common factors if I'm, if I'm required to find the GCD of A and B so I'm trying to see if there is any common prime factors between A and B if there is in that case that is the GCD and if we do not have any common prime factors between A and B next what I am trying to do or rather what we are doing is trying to find if there exists some uh, you know, common prime factors between B and R and then we are repeating the whole process till we come either at a point where we can actually find the GCD either we get a value of GCD to be some number or else it will be one. <coughs> so that means that GCD between two numbers A and B if A is equal to B Q plus R so the GCD between this number A and B whatever it is should also be equal to the GCD between the number B and R. What exactly I mean by this? Let's say A has got a, uh, the, the GCD between A and B is G. So I can say well A is equal to a G into N1 probably and B is equal to G into N2. So I mean, if I'm replacing this value of A and B in this equation, so I'm going to replace the value of A from here, I'm going to replace the value of B from here to this equation. So what I end up getting, G N1 is equal to, in case of B, it is G N2 plus R. So this implies that R is actually equal to G of N1, oh, sorry, I've got a Q here, G of N1 minus G M2 into Q and you can see here with this R also I am having the GCD G I am getting minus M2 Q so as you can see here with R also I am getting the GCD and I assume the GCD between A and B to be G and if I am taking the R so with R also I am getting this uh, value G here so that implies that if even the GCD between B and R is Q so next time again whenever we will do the process, repeat the process, again we will end up getting another radius and the radius, sorry, another reminder and the GCD between the reminder and whatever term we get here again will be the GCD value. It should be the GCD value. So basically GCD between A and B should be equal to GCD between B and R. And that is why this particular diagram is making a sense because I have got a number A or a number B and a number A so I can say well that is equal to I have got a B square or I have got one B here, I have got another B here and I am left with a number this one is R and then this one is B and I got one R probably another R and then I am left with a number R and then a R1 here and 
then this is 1R1, 2R1, and then the remaining here is R2 and the R1. And this way I can keep on repeating. And you can see here the GCD basically is the relation between this and this. And the same thing we are doing here. So this and this are having relationships. So visually, this is how the GCD would look like. So if I got, or if I'm required to find the GCD between two number A and B, and if the GCD turns out to be D, assume, then I can say, well, this D actually is a linear combination of A and B, where this X and Y are just some constant, and this D is a linear combination of A and B. And in order for me to prove this, I need to use Bizolima. So we'll try to look into what Bizolima says. So let's say you have got a number A and B, and the GCD of A and B is G. So it says that G can be written in terms of A and B as a linear combination AX plus BY. So that's what the Bezole mass is. So in order for us to prove this, what approach shall we use? Okay. So let us assume that the GCD is D. So in other words, I can say well, D can be written in terms of AX plus BY where D is the GCD of uh, A and B. So D is the GCD of A and B, and D can be written as a linear combination of X and Y. And I assume that I got a set here A, and this set of A has got all elements N1 all the way to N, which are written in terms of uh, ax plus by so all these elements here are in this form and then assume that d is the smallest element in this series or sorry in this set so d is the smallest element i assume d is the smallest element next thing is a and b a and b cannot be zero at the same time if only one is zero, let's say either A or B is zero condition, if, if only A is zero, so that means B can have two possible values, the highest and lowest we are considering. So the maximum for value of B, if B is supposed to be a positive number, if B is greater than zero, in that case, uh, the maximum value of B will be uh, sorry, the minimum value of B will be 1 and if B is less than 0, in that case the maximum value of B will be minus 1 and same goes if uh, B is equal to 0 and A in that case can have two value again 1 and minus 1. So whether A is equal to 1 or minus 1, I can say well if A is equal to 1, this implies that a is equal to 1 into 1 plus 0 so it is again in this form if A is equal to minus 1 so I can write minus 1 into 1 plus 0 same goes with B uh, with plus 1 value and B with minus 1 value so in other words I can say well this set is not empty this is not an empty set we got some element here next thing if B is the element can, which can be written in this form so I'm assuming that B has got a value of uh, a form of AU plus BV. Again, we know and I assume that B is the GCD of A and B. So this implies that A can be, or rather A is divisible by B. So if that is the case, this implies A is equal to BQ1 plus R1. And again, B can be divisible by B. This implies B equal to BQ2 plus R2. Now I've got a D here and I've got a D here. So can I replace this uh, value of D? And if I replace it, so this implies A is equal to AU 
plus BV in place of V I am writing into a Q1 plus an R1 or this implies A is equal to A U Q1 plus B V Q1 plus R1 or this implies A U Q1 minus of A plus B V Q1 is equal to the radius sorry the uh, remainder or uh, this implies that I can write this into I can take the A out and you can say well A it is uh, UQ1 minus 1 plus uh, B UQ1 is equal to the remain, uh, remainder so this implies that the remainder itself has got this form a x plus b y form so you can see here this is some sort of a x and this is some sort of a y so even the uh, remainder can be written in terms of x and y and if the remainder can be written in terms of x and y and i assume that this particular set has got the list element b which can be written in this form and so d is the all the already the smallest element so i have got the r here again in this form so r cannot be smaller than the smallest element the only possible value for r could be zero then only this makes sense so if r becomes zero so so here i am writing in terms of a and the same can be done for b as well so we can say well r1 and r2 are zero so if that is the case r1 and r2 are zero so this implies that a is equal to b q1 and similarly b is equal to b q2 or as i can see here for both for a and b i have got this b so that implies that b is the gcd uh, or not gcd we are here to prove the gcd you can say well b is the um, common uh, divisor between a and b so in order for me to prove that b it, itself is the greatest common divisor so i can assume that probably I might have another um, divisor E where E <coughs> because now E is got uh, I'm assuming that I've got the another divisor E so I can write well D, uh, sorry A divisible by E so this implies A is equal to EQ1 and similarly I get B divisible by B implies that B is equal to EQ2 now with a equal to eq1 and uh, b equal to eq2 so i can write this value of a and b here so i can write well this implies b equal to i'm using this thing again that b equal to au plus bb and i'm replacing a and b by this term so i can say well b equal to in case of a i write eq1 and well, and then i put a u here and then for b i will write that is equal to e Q2 and then I put a B here. Now I know that E is uh, already greater than 1 and then so that implies that the whole thing definitely uh, if uh, I am using the value of E here and we say, as we know that E is uh, greater than 1 that means the whole thing now act definitely is uh, you know E definitely is equal to this and because this itself is a value E that is greater than 1 and then I put this additional term here so that means D definitely is bigger than 1 so that D is not just the uh, common divisor but it is in fact the greatest common divisor so uh, D is the greatest common divisor so we have done with Bezoni so now there is another way of uh, doing this whole thing and that is in terms of uh, the number of steps we need in order to do the Euclidean algorithm. So we are considering again we have got two elements A and B well, and they are having a GCD of uh, B assume so or what I mean to say is A divided by B is uh, some, cons some constant Q or I can say well A is equal to B Q1 and I am assuming, as I mentioned, that the GCD of A and B is B, so B is the GCD of A and B. Now, since B is the GCD of A and B, I can say, well, B is also equal to B minus A plus A, or this implies B is equal to, I am keeping B as it is, and the 
for the other a i am writing this a in terms of vq1 so in place of uh, minus a i can write well that is equal to because a is equal to vq1 so minus of a is equal to minus of vq1 plus a or this implies b equal to i can take the b common so it becomes one plus one minus q1 plus a and again you can see here this uh, can be written in terms of a and b as you can see here so b is the gcd so this is equal to a into one plus b into one minus q minus q1 so this i can think of as x and this i can think of as y so as we have seen that with this i can write the gcd in terms of ax and by form and because we have seen that uh, gcd of uh, a and b whatever the gcd is the same will be the gcd for b and r with uh, uh, this keeping this in mind now let's say when we are doing the Euclidean algorithm to find the gcd between a and b the number of steps we require is n and if now we are finding the gcd between b and r so quite naturally the number of steps we will require is one less than n so the number of steps now i will require is n minus one so this is known as u len and so this is known as u len so in case of uh, b and r u len is n minus one and in case of uh, a b the u len is n no because we know a is equal to b q plus r so similarly i can say well this implies r equal to a minus of b q now because we know gcd of a and b is equal to the gcd between b and r and if uh, that is the case so since uh, we know that gcd of a and b is also the gcd of b and r so i am writing now in terms of like bx plus ry is equal to the gcd of a and b and i assume and we know the gcd of a and b is equal to b now i have got a bx and then in case of for r we know r is equal to a minus bq so i can write this is equal to a minus bq into y should be equal to b and this implies so i have got the bx here i can take the b factor out here so that is equal to minus of bq into y and then i have got the a here and dash that should be equal to b and you can see here i've got a b here so i can take the b common and then this becomes x minus q y and then i've got the a and that should be equal to b so b as you know is the gcd so this is the gcd so uh, and this x minus q y basically is a constant so i can say well this is equal to x and a into y so i can say this as uh, y so again we can see here the same division in terms of uh, uh, ax and by form and that's how we, we managed to find that all the gcd can be written in terms of a linear combination of a and b so if i am required to find uh, the gcd of a and b and if that gcd is d assumed then d can be written as a linear combination of a and b so D can be written as the linear combination of E and B. So what I mean to say, D can be written as a linear combination of E and B. So what is the importance of this? So let's say we are required to find an, uh, in, in, uh, the solution of certain uh, equation. Let's say 5 is equal to 2x plus 3y. So if I am required to find D, uh, the, the solution for this one so you can see here this is of the same form now so d as we know is the linear combination uh, d is the gcd and a and b are the two numbers or the two integers positive integers for which we are required to find the gcd and then this is the d and it can be written in terms of the linear combination so same goes for here so if i got a two number Three and uh, two and three. So we will now try to see what is the GCD of two and three. So quite natural, three is equal to two into one plus one. 
So 1 is the GC, so 1 is equal to 3 minus 2 into 1. So now we have got an equation of this one, of this form, and now I can use this as, so this implies that 1 into 5 is equal to 3 into 5 minus 2 into 1 into 5. So this implies 5 is equal to 15 minus 10. So, so actually, so this is equal to 3 into 5 plus 2 into minus 5. So you can see here it is of this form, it is of this form, so the value of y is equal to uh, 5 and the value of x turns out to be minus 5. So I can get the solution for this equation. So this sort of equation is known as linear diffantine equation. In order for you to solve the linear diffantine equation, we can use the Euclidean algorithm. So that is the sole purpose of Euclidean algorithm to find solution of linear Diophantine equation. Now, with the help of uh, <coughs> this uh, Bizot lemma, we can also check and just by looking at the equation whether that equation can have some solution or not. Now, let's say an equation of the form of 13x plus 2y is equal to uh, is equal to uh, or maybe 13x plus uh, 26 is equal to 2 so whether I will have some equal solution of this equation or not so 13 and 26 so the GCD of 13 and 26 can very clearly guess that that is equal to 13 so this should have the that the left hand side should have either 13 or a multiple of 13 so 13x as the solution so if I do not have 13x as the solution in the right hand side so that implies that this equation cannot have a solution so just by looking at the equation and, and trying to see that whatever the results we are supposed to get, get the, the value whether that value is a GCD or a multiple of GCD just by looking at it we can say whether the, the equation has got some solution or not if it is the, if the value is it turns out to be GCD or some multiple of GCD in that case this will have solution if not it won't have solution next no so far we have seen that uh, any number can be written in, in, in uh, AX plus uh, BY form and the reminder is uh, always so uh, we are considering so far to be greater than zero in fact we can have also have uh, uh, a condition where the reminder is uh, negative so definitely we can have uh, a negative reminder type of uh, including algorithm uh, so that is your all negative uh, hmm, Euclidean algorithm and we can also have uh, a type of algorithm, uh, algorithm where we are not considering the negative or the positive value but rather we are considering the absolute value so we can have three forms of Euclidean algorithm one with the remainder being negative general one and the remainder being positive and the third one with the remainder being in the absolute form so if the remainder is absolute so we call that as L uh, they are lowest absolute reminder form and if it is positive so lowest positive reminder form and if it is negative lowest negative reminder form so example of lowest uh, absolute uh, uh, reminder form so what basically I need to do it so let's say uh, you have got a number and the number I am representing in terms of some uh, length Okay, so let's say uh, we have got uh, 8. So we are trying to find uh, the GCD between uh, 8 and uh, 3. So 8 and 3. So I can say, well, 8 is equal to 3 into 2 plus uh, 2. So the reminder is 2. Now the reminder. I can also write this as 3 into 3 minus 1. So this is your normal lowest positive reminder. And this is your negative reminder. So you can have a positive reminder form, you can have a negative reminder form. 
So it gives us a bit of flexibility whether I want to use the positive or whether I want to use the negative. Now let us suppose I have got uh, or I have got a number of uh, so this one the two here the reminder how much so assume this is three this is one this is two and this is three and then i have two so this is the half amount of three so if i got a reminder which is away from this halfway mark somewhere here less than the less than equal to the halfway mark okay so if that is the case then we can do the absolute type what i mean to say is let's say the number i'm looking at the or the gcd i'm doing is uh, between a and b again and a is equal to b of uh, x1 or plus x2 so i'm writing instead of uh, q1 and q2 i'm writing in terms of x1 and x2 now this x2 if this x2 basically is the reminder and this x1 is basically the q1 that we are writing before so if this x2 is uh, less than equal to half of x1 or this implies twice of x2 is less than x1 so this is the condition where we need to do the absolute uh, form so what exactly i mean by this so in order for us to prove that the number of steps in normal Euclidean algorithm and uh, the least absolute reminder are same we need to compare the thing and in order for us to compare what are we going to do so let us assume that we are required to find the gcd between two numbers x0 and x1 so we are required to find the gcd between this number and we will try to do or rather find the gcd using normal procedure and then using uh, absolute procedure and then we'll try to um, compare the thing so if we look into the normal uh, uh, gradient algorithm so we can say well that imply that x1 x0 sorry x0 is equal to x1 into q1 plus uh, x2 i've got here and we can say well x1 is equal to x2 into q2 plus x3 and i can carry on and on till let's say xn minus 1 is equal to uh, or rather xn minus 2 is equal to xn minus 1 qn minus 1 plus uh, uh, x uh, n and I can say well x n minus 1 is equal to x n q n and we are done so how many the uh, steps we are required to um, <coughs> so what are the total number of steps uh, if we carry out as we have carried out the normal uh, GCT uh, normal Euclidean algorithm so the number of steps is equal to you can see here I put a q here q1 here q2 here q2 uh, qn so that is equal to the summation of qi where i is equal to 1 to n and then we have got uh, so from here to here i got the uh, total uh, n from 1 to n minus 1 so total i have got n minus 1 so these are the total number of steps we were required to um, perform in order to carry out the gcd using uh, normal Euclidean algorithm so the total number of steps so probably we will write here is the total number of steps so steps is equal to summation of qi with i equal to 1 to n plus n minus 1 now we will try to find out the total number of steps using absolute uh, this absolute reminder form. So, if we are looking into GCD in terms of uh, LAR form, so we will ignore the initial part and let's start off with the last three part. So, x i minus 2 
and xi and xi plus 1. So we'll be looking uh, into the last three terms and then if we look into the last three terms, uh, or sorry, xi minus 1 and then I put xi. So we'll be looking into the last three uh, terms of the uh, uh, GCD. So xi minus 2 is equal to xi minus 1 into qi minus 1 plus uh, xi and then xi minus 1 is equal to xi into qi plus uh, xi uh, plus 1 and xi is equal to xi plus 1 qi plus 1 plus xi plus 2 so we uh, will try to see each of this so these are the last three steps if uh, we are doing the uh, Euclidean algorithm so we'll be looking into the last three steps only <coughs> so now if you look into the first one x i minus 2 so x i minus 2 is equal to x i minus 1 q i minus 1 plus x i remember we are doing uh, in terms of lowest absolute reminder and lowest absolute reminder means i need to get some negative here and in order for me to have some negative here what i can do is i can write this as x i minus 2 is equal to x i minus 1 q i minus 1 plus an x of i minus 1 and minus of x i minus 1 plus x i and this i can write well this is equal to x i minus 1 q i minus 1 plus a 1 and then plus uh, x i minus x i minus 1 so i am writing this in terms of a negative number so uh, this is equal to x i minus 1 q i minus 1 plus 1 and then i got a, can put the minus here so that is equal to minus x i minus 1 minus of x i so the whole thing i wrote in terms of a minus because i am required to uh, write the whole thing in terms of minus because we are trying to prove the thing using linear absolute reminder and we know in case of linear absolute reminder we need to have the negative so this is uh, what the x uh, i minus 2 is so x i minus 2 is actually equal to this so we'll just retain this because we will require this result what about the next one next one x i minus 1 is equal to x i q y plus x i plus 1 now we'll be using uh, the, the uh, previous uh, we will be using the fact that x i the reminder is always less than we know the uh, cushion and the reminder itself will be greater than half of the cushion so we'll be using this standard thing in order to get this one so how you're going to do so because we know this is true so now i'm going to reverse the thing so I can, if this is true, so this implies 2 by x i minus 1 is greater than 1 by x i is greater than 1 by x i minus 1. So this implies that now I've got the x minus i at the downside, so I will multiply the whole thing with x i minus 1. So if I multiply x i minus 1 at the top here also x i minus 1 and here also x i minus 1 so this x minus 1 this cancel this cancel this cancel and i'm left with this one so what we end up getting is 2 is greater than x i minus 1 by x i and is greater than 1 now if we look into this so this is the result we get so i will grab this portion and just uh, uh, look into the result so this is the result we got and then we have this equation so this 
x i minus one is equal to x i q i plus x i plus one. Now if if I look into this and this, I can use this here only if I divide by x i. So if I divide by x i in the left hand side and right hand side, so this and this cancel and for the other one I will have x i minus 1 by x i is equal to q i because this and this will cancel plus x i plus 1 divided by x i. Now this x i minus 1 divided by x i is a number between 1 and 2 x i plus 1 divided by x i is a fraction so on the right hand side I have got a number which is between 1 and 2 and this is a fraction so these two things can only make sense only if q i or sorry q 1 is equal to 1 so from this and this if we look into and compare we could say well q 1 actually is equal to 1 so this whole second equation actually now would look, would look like this whole second equation would look right now x i minus 1 is equal to x i because q i is 1 plus x i plus 1 and what about the last equation last equation was x i plus 1 is equal to x i plus so, so it should be x i plus 2 it should be 2 plus 3 or I made a mistake I think uh, it should be xi minus 1 so the next thing will be xi so xi should be equal to xi plus 1 this plus 1 and this is plus 2 so now this is what I got for the second equation. This is what I got for the third equation. Sorry, first equation. So the first equation is this one. The second equation now is this one. What about the third equation? Since xi is equal to xi plus 1 qi plus 1 plus xi plus 2. And then <coughs> from here I can say, well, this xi is actually x i minus 1 minus x i plus 1 so I can replace this x i with x i minus 1 minus of x i plus 1 I am using this one is equal to x i plus 1 q i plus 1 plus x i plus 2 so this is what I get now I can take this x i plus 1 as, uh, as, as, as common and we end up getting uh, this whole equation if I take the x uh, i plus 1 as common we end up getting x i minus 1 is equal to x i plus 1 q i plus 1 plus 1 plus x i plus 2 so this first equation is this one the second equation is this one and the third equation is this one so we'll write this uh, equation again because this looks very like dirty and clumsy so if we look and if we rewrite this equation again so i'm just cleaning up things so that i just can now write this uh, uh, three equation properly x uh, of I minus 1 <coughs> is equal to x i plus 1 q i plus 1 plus a 1 minus x i uh, plus 1 and uh, 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 I think I wrote properly or i plus 2 i plus 2 and then the x uh, i minus 2 is equal to x uh, i minus 2 q 
i minus 1 plus 1 minus x i plus 1. And the uh, other equation was x uh, i minus 1 is is equal to x i plus x i plus 1. So what is the number of steps if I consider this two? So I don't need to use this equation again, so I will ignore this part, so I'm just considering this two. So if I consider this two, so what it turns out to be? So the total number of steps now, if I consider this three will be so total I have got uh, uh, how many steps so, so now i will have because i have got a negative sign here so because of the negative sign i will have uh, one step or less so with i minus 2 i got a negative sign so this is uh, negative so with i minus 2 i got a negative sign and that is where i will have one uh, step less as we have seen uh, before so that means last time my step was n minus 1 so now it will be n minus 1 minus 1 so these are the total number of steps plus how many times I, need, I was required to multiply so that is equal to summation of uh, j equal to 1 to i minus 2 uh, to i minus 2 and then a qj plus q i minus 1 plus 1 so this one so before that it was i minus 2 so j equal to i to i minus 2 plus now onwards will be q i plus 1 plus a 1 and then i got this summation now so it is i plus 1 and after plus 1 i will have uh, uh, what I will have i plus 2 so j equal to i plus 2 to n and the q j so this I can further write down is equal to n minus i plus summation of j equal to 1 to n q j plus 1 and this j is not equal to i so this i can further write down is equal to n minus 1 plus summation of j equal to 1 to n q j plus q i and with q i so this i can further write down is equal to n minus 1 plus summation of J equal to 1 to n q j. So this and this are same. So the number of steps will be same. So this is big clumsy mathematics. So I'm not sure whether you understand this or not. So that's all for now. Bye bye. Take care.